Hi, I'm Bruno Aziza, and today I'm here with Eric, who is the CEO of Hortonworks. Hello. Thank you very much for your time, Eric. Uh, people know you in the community for your huge contribution. You were at Yahoo before, and you started the movement around Hadoop. You, you ran some of the largest deployments, 42,000 servers. Mm -hmm. Today you run Hortonworks. Hortonworks is one of the most emblematic companies in, in this space. You're recognized by the Forrester Wave as one mm -hmm. of the leaders, uh, and you've got quite a few things. Uh, to uh, your, your benefit, which is the, the contribution to the movement. So if you can take us to maybe the beginning of how all of this got started, the thing that would help our audience understand Hadoop and the big data movement. Well, sure, well first, thank you for the flattering introduction. But uh, so when we started this back in 2005, I was at that point chief architect for web search at Yahoo. Mm -hmm. And we were crawling and indexing billions of web pages. Sort of. So we were dealing with a really world-class big data problem. And the challenge was how could we take the technology that we were building in a sort of silo and generalize it so that it could be used across the organization, across the company. And we decided that the best way to do that was to build an open source project. If we did that, not only could we solve a number of problems inside Yahoo, but ultimately we could provide a more general platform that, because it was more widely used, would get investment from beyond Yahoo and uh, ultimately contribution and value back to Yahoo. If you build in this space where you have a small number of users, you know, numbered in the thousands in the case of Yahoo, but still small, mm -hmm. it's really, you know, it's easy to build a product which becomes obsolete by the development and outside of your company. And so the thought was, if we go open source aggressively, then we can be on the platform of the future instead of having to ultimately transition to the platform of the future. And by um, adopting a fairly well understood sort of model, MapReduce and HDFS, we figured even if we lost, if somebody else outdid our efforts in open source, well then the transition would be very easy. Um, so, and as it turned out, Hadoop has succeeded beyond our wildest dreams, and Yahoo is reaping the benefits of that. So. And so, what kind of uh, uses does Yahoo make out of the uh, out of the platform or out of the technology, and, and how does this relate to the work that you do at Hortonworks? Mm -hmm. uh, how does Yahoo use the technology? Um, we really like to say that Hadoop is behind every click at Yahoo. Um, Hadoop is not a real-time system, so mm -hmm. when you go to the web page, Hadoop is not spinning right then. But what happens is that Hadoop is used for batch processing to do a huge number of tasks across Yahoo. It's used to understand a user's interest. It's used to understand how to build a better um, algorithm for selecting the ads that people like or the search results that people like. It's used to detect mail spam. So it's just used in a thousand different ways. So Yahoo does have, as you said, 42,000 different machines on the order of 170 petabytes of raw storage, 5 million jobs per month, and a thousand unique active users using this cluster. So it's, Hadoop is provided as a service to sort of every development arm of Yahoo, and it's just hugely impactful both in terms of production and in terms of the science to build new products. So we're talking about the, the issue of scaling large data problems at scale, I would say. Huh. And, and in Hortonworks, you're about the acceleration, the commercialization of, of the Absolutely. movement. So how do, how do you take the open source aspect and, and accelerate that, and, and why does it need it? Right, so you asked how uh, what we did at Yahoo is mm -hmm. relevant to Hortonworks. And the, the answer is we sort of, as we watched this uh, trend develop, it became clear that the learnings at Yahoo could be generalized and that we could bring um, sort of Hadoop expertise to the world. And that Hadoop we see as, it's perceived almost as inevitable at this point. People see Hadoop as the coming big data solution. But it's still very hard for an enterprise to integrate it into their workflow. Hadoop is still fairly young, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. So hence Hortonworks. Our focus is sort of on making Hadoop easy to consume and therefore sort of driving it to become the next generation enterprise data platform. We think that with if everything goes right, Hadoop can be um, within five years. Hadoop can process half the world's data, which is a sort of big aspiration. But to to do that, we want to make Hadoop a very general uh, platform that's consumed by a lot of people, and they we want to see a lot of enterprises do with it what Yahoo did. 
So let's talk about that because mm -hmm. beyond the obvious contribution to the foundation mm -hmm. and, and code, there's also work that you must be doing then with enterprises to mm -hmm. get them ramped up to the movement. So how do they get started? If I'm a CIO and listening to this mm -hmm. and I want to engage with Hortonworks, what do I do? Right. So we provide a number of service offerings to enterprise. Uh, first and foremost, we provide training and architectural consulting. So as you enter into sort of Hadoop evaluation, we have a number of resources for you. I'd point you, and, you know, to our website. We have a number of places people can go to just sort of get a sense of what Hadoop is, what problems it solves. Um, we then do training on site or in our training centers, and we also provide, as I said, architectural consulting. Mm -hmm. um, but our primary offering is really Hadoop support. We sell um, sort of uh, support 24 by 7 for Hadoop once it's in production, and also development support as your team gets up to speed on, on Hadoop. Right? It's an open source product. Anybody is uh, free to download and use Hadoop from Apache uh, or our package distribution. Everything we do is completely free and open source. But our experience is that um, you know, to actually establish Hadoop at scale, you know, there's a lot of moving parts, there's a lots of learning, and it helps to be able to call people who really understand it well when you encounter problems, and that's what our support offering allows you to do. So if I have a, a set of employees inside my team that might be analysts, it might be DBAs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is there a particular skill set that help, that I should be looking at, that is going to be easier for people to ramp up to Hadoop, or...? Um, well, I think about that. It, yeah, it's a, there's a lot of different dimensions to that, obviously. Uh, first off, you know, as I said, Hadoop, we have a thousand Hadoop users at Yahoo, and many, many other organizations have many of them. They, they, weren't all, they didn't all go to college to be trained to be Hadoop users. Yeah. One of the things that is exciting about Hadoop is that once it's sort of set up, it's actually fairly easy to use. Um, so, in terms of, and in fact, a lot of what happens is you have a small number of people who use it to process data and, and then move that data into more traditional data systems. So it's used okay. in complement with existing systems. So a lot of your analysts may be able to use their existing tools and have, if you take a small cadre of people to sort of use Hadoop to prepare the data. But so existing database engineers, people who have a strong background in sort of systems, operations, most of these people, you know, Hadoop is not revolutionary in terms of how to use and install it. It's just a series of facts people need to learn. So I would say it's not so much a matter of finding new staff mm -hmm. as giving your staff time to experiment and learn how to use it. And of course, we provide training resources to help with that. So are there particular industries that are more prone to wanting to use Hadoop, or is this across the board? It's really much more across the board. Uh, Gardner, I believe, has a stat that says that within the next few years, they're gonna, there's going to be an 800% growth in the amount of data that the average um, enterprise is consuming. So if you think about that, um, and the majority of that data is also unstructured, so if you think about that, that implies that uh, a lot of enterprises are just going to look at scaling challenges. So the way I like to describe big data is that if you um, are finding that your traditional systems just cannot take the problem size you're trying to solve now or that to solve your problem as your business grows is going to cost an inordinate amount of money, then you have a big data problem. So the message here is that it doesn't matter if you're in retail, financial services, you're going to get into a, a moment where your tools are going to run out of, uh, of capacity and you know that... Uh, if you haven't hit that, it's just a matter of time before you do. Well, it certainly is the case that many people are hitting that, and uh, Hadoop is a solution. Now, there's also something interesting about your strategy is your partnership with Microsoft, and you typically think, okay, well, open source movement and commercial software. Why does Hadoop on Windows make sense in, in your view? Mm -hmm. Uh, it makes a tremendous amount of sense to us simply because there are so many, you know, trained Windows users in the world and so many shops that have built an infrastructure on Windows. So our whole goal is to make uh, Hadoop more consumable by more enterprises. Mm -hmm. um, so bringing Hadoop to Windows just democratizes Hadoop and opens it up to more use cases and more users. And that produces positive 
you know, networking effects for every user of Hadoop. So we're very excited about our um, partnership with Microsoft to bring uh, Hadoop to all of Microsoft's users. Eric, thank you very much for your time. This uh, was very helpful. There's a lot more available on ortonworks.com. That's the URL that we're putting down here for you. There's webinars, website, and there's also Summit coming up. So I hope this was useful to you. Until next time, I'm Bruno Zizan. Thank you.